Okay, so we had some speed bumps, probably most of us, trying to simply log into this. And, and that, of course, uh, already gives a sour taste about, well, how does this work if it's so hard to set up? But all of these networks, you know, if you've got something like Facebook, you probably had it for at least one year, two years, five years, ten years, who knows? So when you first set it up, you don't remember how difficult it was to set up, and it was probably a lot easier. But again, these networks evolve, and they're trying to combat spam and, and bots and, and all of that, so they get a little harder to set up. But once they're set up, they, they're going to work. I do want to note, it was a good point earlier, uh, about perhaps creating an email account used only for this social network stuff. And so there's many of them out there to choose from, of course, Hotmail, Gmail, so many of them to choose from. Here's one that just was invented in the last year. So maybe claiming your name, that's another challenge. Well, I can't get Victor at Gmail anymore. Someone got it 15 years ago. But here's a brand new email system that just came out, Vivaldi Mail. You can get it at webmail.vivaldi.net. And you would get something at vivaldi.net. So a brand new email service, which of course, the downside of it, since it's new, it may be only around for two years, one year, who knows. Uh, something like Hotmail, that's been around 20 years, and Gmail's been around, you know, 18 years. Those aren't going anywhere, but those names are probably taken. And um, so one like this is brand new, so your, your name might, be, might still be there. Who, who owns the, what company owns the... This one is an independent company. We can see over here, Vivaldi Technologies. They are a, um, they're based in Oslo, Norway, so they have their own European laws about privacy and such, which are often better than the U.S. laws. And so they've got uh, this email system over in Norway. Yes? What was, what was this for? In case someone needs to create an email address and don't want to tie it with their existing email address. So I would create an account here and use this as my login to all of the networks instead of my personal email. I'm going to put it right here in the notes, but it's webmail.vivaldi.net. So, um, where did I have it? It may be valuable to create an account, etc. Uh, I'm going to put it right here. A new. Uh, uh, Europe-based email provider is uh, Vivaldi.net. Uh, you may use it to uh, you may use it as your credential credential uh, for social network accounts to keep it separate separate from your personal emails. It's yet another account, yet another password, yet another thing to log into, and nowadays we have less and less time or attention spans. But regarding businesses and such, it might be useful to create the free account here and use it as your logins and such. You saw that from me, it got stuck. Go verify Victor at victorsmith.com. Well, it doesn't even exist, so I can't verify it, so I got stuck. So I did log in with, an, with a Gmail account that I did previously have. Uh, if you were able to, great. If not, uh, sorry. Again, sometimes it's tricky to set this up, but I'm going to move on now, assuming you have the account. If you don't have the account, that's okay. Just follow along, take notes. And the way I'm going to talk about Google+, Plus again, will relate to the other networks we'll talk about. We'll talk about uh, how to post and what to post, and we'll cover it in several ways throughout the course. But I'm going to get started here. So I was able to create an account here. The big idea is, um, I'll put it in the notes also, but plus, if you manage to log in, go to plus.google.com. If you didn't, you can go there, but you won't be able to see too much. Let me see here, actually. What does it look like? What's that? So when we look at this, um, if I was not able to create the account, I still see like a little preview, plus.google.com. If I was able to create the account, it may look a little different. 
Yes. I'm in business.google.com. So when I email, should I log out? No, just try to go to plus.google.com and see if that lets you. If it's still saying that you need to verify your email, then that's as far as you'll be able to go. You may need to switch to a different web browser because it's stuck on verification. So I went to a different browser, maybe Safari or whatever, and it might let you on a different browser. So um, like I said earlier, all of these networks nowadays are sort of like homogenizing. They're all becoming so, so similar and such. Um, they all had like, uh, they, they all often start off with a certain character or a certain demographic or a certain style. But then when one network does something, then another network might copy it. And when one, net one network is successful, then obviously the other networks are going to copy what's successful. We'll see that when we talk about Instagram and Snapchat. Snapchat uh, got success in breaking all the rules. Their interface was very different from every other network. The way you shared stuff was very different from every other network. Well, that started to get an audience. Snapchat started at zero users, and now it's got like 180 million. So then, oh, Facebook is like, ah, Snapchat looks kind of interesting. They've got a really cool system called Stories. We're going to borrow that. So now uh, Instagram has Stories. If you don't know, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So Instagram got stories. Well, Facebook or Snapchat had stories first. And then Twitter says, well, stories is interesting. Let's do our own version. Uh, moments. So they're all kind of borrowing from each other is the nice way. The, the, the real word is ripping each other off. So this kind of looks like a ripoff of something, perhaps, if you've used other social networks. What other social network kind of looks like little boxes of pictures? Pinterest. Um, Pinterest, if you use Pinterest, you see a lot of boxes like this uh, of, of images. So Google Plus's Discover feature is very similar to um, Pinterest. So they all kind of borrow from each other a little bit. Um, I have here an account where I did manage to, to log in. I see stuff, uh, and then there's a button that says, what's new with you? Um, all of these networks are going to have some way to share some content. We started to talk about it last week, and now we'll, we'll get into that deeper. So quick reiteration here, goals for posting to social networks, beginner. Intermediate, advanced, one time per week. Intermediate, two to three times per week. Advanced, one time per day. And as I said last time, yeah, the advanced one is a lot of work, a lot of effort. Every single day, seven days a week, even weekends, maybe. But the reason we're being so active is there's hundreds of millions of people on all of these networks. There's like 200 million on Google+. There's like 330 million on Twitter. There's like 500 million on Instagram. You know, there's hundreds of millions of people on all of these networks. We can look up the exact numbers later. But there's hundreds of millions. Then when you get to Facebook, you've got 2 billion. Not million, billion. So there's a lot of people, there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of businesses on these networks. If you use Twitter once in a while when you remember, you're not going to be remembered because no one's going to see your stuff. No one's going to see your content, your pictures, your ads, your videos, whatever you're sharing, the things we'll talk about. So if you're not active, you're going to fall by the wayside and you're not going to get attention and activity and so forth. So. We are active on a regular basis to um, keep our current followers up to date with our business. We're active to acquire 
new followers to help our business. I said last week that followers sort of equal customers. The more followers you have, the more, the more customers you have. But I did have a, a caveat last week. Um, anyone remember 1%? Only really about 1% of your followers are the real customers that are really going to buy or really going to call you to hire you or to talk to you or whatever. So actually 1% of your followers often are your real customers. And what I mean by real, of course, are the ones that actually buy something. Real customers follow through. They buy. They call. They have that, that ultimate result. All of this social network stuff is, is one coin with two sides. The personal fun, frivolous aspect for friends and family, and then the business side of it. All of these networks have those two ways to be used. So we, of course, are focusing on the business side of the coin. The social networks have two sides, fun, personal, frivolous, frivolous <clears throat> for people. And then we've got um, uh, professional for businesses. And both are valid. Of course I want to log into Facebook or Google Plus or, or, or Twitter and chat with my friends and family about the latest episode uh, of my favorite TV show. Of course I want to log in with friends and family and show them my vacation photos. Perfectly valid. For businesses, we also then want to use the professional version, um, which could be with a fun voice, a frivolous voice, a personal voice, but the point is that my business is trying to reach an audience followers because those followers I want them to then become actual customers so if I've got a hundred followers and if I say that one percent is often your real followers what's one percent of a hundred one so you might have one sale out of 100 and that sounds like so low and 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 so uh, demoralizing I have so many followers but only one is buying well that's what happens and has happened in the real world for decades that if I pay to put my ad in the newspaper, lots and lots and lots of people are going to see it. And two are going to call me. I put that ad on the billboard on the highway, and rush hour, thousands of people will see it. Twelve call me. Well, Twelve thousand saw it, but I only get twelve results. So in the real world, it's also a very low return on investment. In the real world, it is also a very low amount of people that really, really follow through. In the real world, I paid for that billboard. I paid uh, for my ad in the paper. I paid, hopefully, at least minimum wage, the guy in the corner flipping the sign. So in the digital world, um, to start off with, I don't have to pay for this. Free Gmail account, free Twitter account, free Facebook account, and I can start reaching an audience. So. Um, our goals, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, now the, the what to share depends on your business. But possibilities are text, pictures, links, sound, video. And now there's even some, some newer ones, live, events. So we'll, we'll cover all of these on all of the networks. Uh, but this should make sense. Well, I'm going to put a picture, text, whatever, and again, we'll, make, we'll look at these a little later. Um, so advice, and this is not 100% for everyone, but advice. Try to create posts that are open-ended. 
So what do you think that might mean, open-ended? Any opinions? Uh, somebody can, somebody can interact with it. Interact, someone, something that someone can interact with, exactly. Uh, perhaps how? What's that? With a call to action, sure. So here's some examples. Call to action, questions, deals, testimonials. OK, so a call to action. Um, something that a person can do. We'll see examples of how to do these, of course. So questions. Asking opinions. Deals, right? Coupons or sales or whatever that, that are happening. Testimonials. Popularity breeds popularity. People are very social before social media in that they, um, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Have you heard of that expression in the real world? Okay, I got a brand new car because my neighbor got a brand new car. Well, I see something is happening, and I want to try that too. We're, we're, a lot of us are very much like that, follow the leader thing. So if I'm doing testimonials and such, I can show people I'm very popular. I'm selling stuff. People like my stuff. Maybe you should buy my stuff. Question? Um, since I was on your Google Plus just looking at it, there's an article that just popped up. It says, Google to launch brand new version of Google Plus on Android. Oh, OK. And it says, Google is working on a new version, which is supposed to be a brand new and completely rewritten. Mm. Within, the next two days. within the next two days. Okay, so we're gonna have to redo the class next time. <laughs> Just that I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we can start on next week's class. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's what happens with all of these networks. They change once in a while, and uh, maybe some of these speed bumps that we're seeing here are gonna get smoothed out. Uh, so that, that's good to know. Thank you. Uh, yes. Post about the plugins. Amazon launches a plugin that turns blogs posts into audio. Oh, okay. So it narrates it or something? With the plugin, I guess, that launches a poly WordPress plugin. So both of you have kind of proven something that I was going to get to that both of you saw something that caught your attention. In this screen here, perhaps you might be seeing all of these sort of like little ads, or not ads, but uh, shares that someone had, has posted out there. And um, it, it, a few of them then caught your attention, and, and then you, you told me about it. So um, that's, that's the idea happening there. These companies, you can see below all of these. OK, this one is from Neuroscience News. Uh, this one is Stephanie Sh Shashel, Sports News, Stephanie. So different people are sharing different things from Companies, I think I saw something from like the Washington, uh, the Chicago Tribune, uh, Pravin Vibute, uh, Kenny Chafin, etc. So people, businesses, news, or news organizations. Um, did anyone realize there was another U.S. government shutdown overnight last night? We heard about the big one a few weeks ago and another one happened last night. Well, there's all of this stuff that's being put out there and from different people, news organizations, etc. So we, as a business, would put out content to try to get someone's attention, uh, to click, to read more, to share it, maybe ultimately to sell something, right? So of course, we'll, we'll do it in detail. But both of you pointed that out, that I saw something interesting. So a lot of what social media then is, what can I do as a business to stand out to get someone's attention? Ultimately, I want to sell them something. But what can I do to stand out? As I said before, I, I, I'm gonna, last week, I'm going to use the terminology over and over of business and product and all of that. But whatever we talk about in these classes should also apply for a nonprofit organization. These things should apply simply, I'm an author and I want to show off my writing. I'm not trying to sell it. I just want people to read my stuff. Social media helps. So even if I say product and brand and business, it applies to anything you're trying to do online. And so these things that are popping out right here might be deals or questions or calls to action or something interesting 
posts that are open-ended um, so here's a couple of examples if, um, if I've got Victor's Bakery and I'm trying to sell uh, some cookies so bad post versus good post so if I've got these types of things that I can share and starting points about open-endedness a bad post would be a photo of a cupcake well that's bad in contrast to a photo of a cupcake with a link to buy the cupcake and a coupon what could be better a photo of a cupcake with a beater poll asking if people like the flavor it doesn't help to mix all of these things at once I didn't put the link to buy it and I didn't put a coupon I put the picture in a different kind of thing a question do you guys like uh, zucchini banana bread and then obviously I'll get a lot of no's because that sound, doesn't sound that good but I'm putting an open-ended question and I don't have to have like a sales pitch post every time so back to the advice here you don't need to have sales pitches in every post every time constantly trying to sell something ultimately that we want that but it's gonna turn people off if I'm following you on Twitter or Facebook or whatever and you're constantly about me 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 buy 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 sell 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 it might turn people off like I don't I don't like advertising and now it's invading my Facebook account and I keep seeing every time I log in every I see your ad on 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 face on Google Plus yeah, it's a double-edged sword. We're trying to use these networks to market and to advertise, but we have to walk the fine line between it's too much and annoying with enough that it gets people's attention. Yes? Well, that's the whole purpose of this three-month class, <laughs> as we're going to be talking in several ways. So uh, as we do much more concrete things, we, we, we will see that, but part of it is like this. And we will uh, go into detail, of course, then. So it's, sorry if it's a glib response, but it is, we're going to cover all of those. How will we get these followers as time goes on? It's a big answer. So you're saying that even though you don't have the follower, you just post something, and hopefully someone gets attracted to the follower. Yes and no. You are going to be posting when you've got no followers. So yeah, you're going to be talking to no one. But we will be then talking about, as we start to build our content then how to start to get those followers so yeah we'll be we'll be going through it yes yeah there's ways of linking the different accounts probably you're asking if I post on Facebook that it automatically goes to Google Plus yeah. yes there are ways to link these accounts to automatically share to each other uh, let me put a pin on that for the moment uh, that's a longer answer but can I cross post would be the term can uh, can I cross post between networks I'll say yes but and remind me to get back to that longer answer question no. okay so um, the bad one is a dead end it's not open-ended uh, these are open-ended in the terms that there is a link that they could follow to go see the product and hopefully buy it. There's the coupon that hopefully entices. This one's also open-ended because I'm not directly trying to sell them that cupcake, but I'm getting feedback from people. I'm identifying who is active in the network to see how that have, has value a little later. Um, are they providing their email address? Are they? How are you identifying? Um, again, this will be a thing we get into into detail as as we talk a little bit further. 
uh, let me do another here where uh, purpose um, of open ended content to identify people. Uh, let me get back to that because it is a longer answer, but we'll get to it. So um, the the content that I share, which could be videos or just about anything, it's to get people's attention. What happens when you post something, and if I get reactions, I get notifications. So as you post to the networks, you may get reactions, which are notifications. Last week we talked about that the common reactions are like, reply, reshare, follow, and buy. So in this order are there values? I posted a photo of a cupcake, I got a like, but it's the lowest value in my list here because these other ones have more of a possibility that I get better results. So simple show of enjoyment by users, reply more effort. They wrote something meaningful, maybe. And then share, helping you go viral. Follow, increasing your audience. By, of course, ultimate goal. But just because I all week long, every day of the week, I post a photo of my food with a buy link doesn't mean that I'm going to get buys. Just because I'm posting all the time, buy this, buy this, coupon, 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 doesn't mean I'm going to get that result because then it's too much. It's too much advertising, too much marketing, it turns people off. That's that fine line we have to walk. So the more of these reactions that I get, the more it helps me uh, back to the identify people because I get notifications every time someone likes my post Google Plus or Facebook or whatever will pop up a little number um, you can see it over here in Google Plus it's right here I have zero notifications in Twitter it's on a slightly different screen in Facebook it's on a slightly different screen but all of these networks have some sort of notification screen that tells you John Smith liked your photo Janet Jones click your link um, Bill uh, Bill Jones replied to your post so the networks will tell you what what it, what people are doing that they liked something that they replied to something that's how we're identifying them because we're going to see from our list here who these people were that I uh, that like the thing depending on how they filled out their profiles of course if they filled it out minimally and fake and all of that well that's not a very valuable follower but a lot of us fill out these things. I put my favorite movie and what high school I went to and what I had for lunch today and all of that. So we will be able to see all of that as, as these businesses. All of this information that me as the person, it's way too intrusive. As the business, I love that because I can tell this person lives in this location so they would be interested in my product because my business is also in this location. Or this person is interested in a lot of food related things my business is food related I can kinda help that can kinda help me target them more so the identification that happens is dependent on the people themselves of how much they fill in but these networks are set up in a way about like what are you doing today what is, what do you want to share today they're set up in a way that's like that that in, entices people already to give away a lot of information which then we can see as a business The, the accepting and declining only works on Facebook for people. When you deal with businesses, a person doesn't have to be approved to follow a business. 
So it's only for people that we approve. Um, on all of these networks, uh, they're pretty much nowadays, you don't have to do approval anymore. Uh, again, for businesses. For people, yes, of course, I don't want any crazy person following me and stalking me on these networks. So for that, we have that those protections. But for business, anyone can click to follow my business, and I can follow anyone on, on, on these networks as a business. That's that's the way those are set up. When you're following someone, do they see your posts? When I'm following, do they say that again? Do they see my post whenever I post them? If they're following me on any network, they've chosen to see my posts. Yes. So if I'm following another person, if I'm going to see my posts. If I follow them, no, they won't see my posts unless they choose to follow me back. That's what I'm saying. How do you get them to follow you? <laughs> but we're still, we're still on that path to get that final answer. Yes? I'll just try to see if I can Okay, so... Um, I, I'm sharing these posts. I'm hopefully getting reactions. Yes? Can, can you get at people who are following other people? Can I get to like followers? If I go in through, through a guy that's on the floor and I say 9 million followers, I start following some of those people because I know they follow the others. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it may draw them to the media. Yes, uh, definitely. Let me put another note here uh, tactics to get followers. So, of course, I have ways to do this, and, and we'll get to that, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, um, the um, the point is, I'm going to be active on these networks. I'm going to share content, maybe a video, maybe a link, etc. We'll 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 see that. Uh, we might get a reaction. So uh, on Facebook or Instagram or any of these networks, then I have a screen that tells that tells me, John liked your photo, whatever. So the purpose of this, as I get these reactions, I'm starting to identify people. So when I know who I uh, who has liked or replied, etc. my content, I, uh, I may be able to get followers from that by then interacting more with those people, with those accounts. Once I've identified, Janet liked my photo of the cupcake. Well, as I said, like is the lowest level. It's not the worst, it's just the lowest. The worst is no reactions. But I've identified at least one person that liked my photo. So on all of these networks, I'm able to then follow through. Like, OK, uh, let's see if I find um, some person over here. Uh, I'll just pick someone randomly. Meteor database. OK, so uh, Ajinkya. Uh, on all of these, there's a way you know, you put your mouse over their icon or, or you click, but they've got a profile. I can click on their profile. So I see their profile. They seem to be into technology. Well, my business is, a, is not about technology, but they, they seem to be into technology. So I have the option then to click follow. They get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. They get a little number up on the top. And this would happen exactly on all the networks. On Instagram, I share something. It tells me seven people liked my photo. I can go see who are these seven people. When we get to Instagram, we'll see exactly how the screen looks like. But on all of these, I can identify who is liking my stuff, who is replying. I can then, one tactic is to then follow them. Because then they get the notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. If they're into what my business is about, that may be enough that then they say, OK, I'll follow Victor's Bakery. So I get the. I get the higher level here. It's not the best one of all. The best one is then, I, yeah, they followed me, but I want them to buy. So tactics. Follow accounts that you've identified that are interested in your topic, in your business, in your brand, in the stuff that you're sharing. Follow those accounts you may get a follow back. You may get people to follow you back because they get notified, either on the website or if they've got the app, 
they get the notification. Victor's Bakery followed you. Some people will say, who's Victor's Bakery? I don't know who they are. Block. OK, that's just, that, that happens. Other people will say, who's Victor's Bakery? They click on the, the, my icon. They see that my business is about baked goods. They see that I'm in San Diego. They're in San Diego. They might follow. Uh, they look at my profile, Victor's Bakery, I don't care, move on. That's common too, that's normal too, those, those, uh, all those possible reactions. I get a follow, I don't get a follow, I get blocked. That's okay, it's all free. I'm going to try again with the next person. To some degree it is a little bit of a numbers game, but it is about being active, like I said. Question. So there is a way to block somebody if you don't want them to follow you on Google Plus? In all of the networks, there is ways to block people, yes. If they're, you know, being annoying or harassing, you're able to block them, yeah. If you don't want them to follow for any reason, yeah, there's ways to block people. Businesses and all. Mm -hmm. Each network varies a little bit, but somewhere in a button, somewhere, it says right here, block. Oh. So, so where's the like button if you just want to let them know that you like their posting? On Google Plus, instead of it being a like, it's a plus one. Oh. So instead of a little thumbs up, you're giving them a plus one. So that's how I can like someone else's stuff. I give it a plus one. Over on, um, you know, face uh, on Twitter, you give a heart. So all the networks have a different sort of terminology. They're all likes, but they all have a different so terminology. You can press that plus one and still remain anonymous. You don't have to follow them in order to. Do no, you don't remain anonymous because. And Jikia will get a notification that says Victor's Bakery liked your post. So any action that you do will alert them. Oh. Just like I get alerted when people do actions on my stuff, they'll get alerted uh, that Victor's Bakery liked my post, that Victor's Bakery followed me, that Victor's Bakery replied. So no, you, you can't do this anonymously. It is, it is public. Yes? Where it says the tree has community, JavaScript, what is, what is that? Is that that's another thing I'll get to later because this is specifically something on Google Plus, uh, uh, other ways to reach an audience. So uh, I'll put here another note to come back to, which is Google Plus communities. So when we were back on Twitter last week, we were kind of touching on this a little bit as well in that if I search and I find people, these are people interested in cookies. I've identified people on Twitter that are interested in cookies. So I could do one of the tactics that I'm saying so far here. On Twitter, I could have then clicked follow an account. They would have been alerted. Victor's Bakery followed you. So then they may have chosen ignore, block, or follow. So one of the ways to get followers is for me to follow accounts. You may get a follow back. Notice I have here may. I don't know the stats, but often it's not one to one. If I follow a hundred accounts, that doesn't mean I'm going to get a hundred followers back. I may get 90, I may get nine. I don't know. It's up to the person to choose to follow back or not. So it's somewhat of a numbers game but with this tactic. But here's some downsides. You won't get 100% follow backs. I don't know the percentage. Less than 50% is very common, probably 10%. I don't know. It depends on the network and various factors. Downsides you will then see all the posts they share. On your home screen, where you see all of the stuff being shared to Google+, you will then start to see what they share. So if then you, you start to get this content that you don't care about or like or is offensive or is completely off topic to you, you're going to see that. You've chosen to follow an account that's telling the network, I want to see their stuff. Just like the opposite. If they followed you, that means they want to see your stuff. They want to see your photos, their pictures, your links, and all of that. So one reason you're not going to just go like you're not going to go following a hundred accounts every day. You're going to see stuff that you don't want to, offensive stuff, off-topic stuff, dumb stuff, boring stuff. So this one is not one of the best ways to get a follower. It is one of the ways to get a follower, and we'll talk about more, of course. But one way is 
I've interacted with an account that I've identified that might be interested in me, so I'll follow them and they may follow me back. Another way, interact with the accounts you've identified as potential customers. I'm identifying the potential customers again by the content I create, by the replies or the likes or the reshares or whatever that I get. So that assumes you're being active. That assumes you're posting once a week or, or maybe twice a week or every day or something. You're being active. You're, um, people might be finding your stuff and they might be liking or replying. Well, I can do these same actions onto customers that they can do to me that I that I want. I want follows, I want likes, I want replies. You can do all of these actions to the people themselves. If I've got here follow as like one of the highest levels, well the downside as I've said of you following 100 accounts is you're going to see stuff you might not care about. So lower level but still valuable things that you could do are these. You could like people's stuff. They get a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your post. They might then check, who's Victor's Bakery? I like that stuff. Let me follow. Who's Victor's Bakery? I don't like what they're sharing. Who cares? Move on. You may reply to someone's post about something food-related. Again, they will, they will get the notification. They can then decide to follow you or not. You can reshare someone else's posts and then they get the notification and then decide if they want to follow through or not. So interact with the accounts you've identified. So you give likes or replies or reshares to accounts of potential followers. That protects you from when you follow an account, you're going to see all that stuff that you might not care about. You like someone's comment or whatever, you're not going to see any more of their stuff on your home timeline. You didn't do a follow. So this might be a better way instead of you trying to follow accounts, you like accounts, you like their stuff. Last time on Twitter, we, we saw that via search. We have search in Google Plus as well. I have search up here. I'm going to search for cookies. These search boxes only search inside of the social network. They don't search all over the internet. Uh, in Google Plus, if I'm able to search here, this is going to give me results of communities, people, collections, or actual posts. So here I saw the Daily Bread Bakery and Cafe, they shared that. Um, Cameron Shahzad shared that. Saving Cent by Cent, Lisa Park, Robert Octel. So there's different people here, Darren, Desert Dog, Williams. Uh, I'm seeing different people sharing things on different um, uh, topics. And uh, I, could, I could do this, I like... Um, I like that, so yeah, I'll click like. So th this is real, this is live. Uh, Dragana got a notification right now that said, Victor's Bakery liked your post. So I do another one over here, Gloria. I'll click a like. So, yes, question? As a rule of thumb, if you're starting out with a new presence on, for example, Google Plus, should you have a little certain number of posts or approximately before you start liking and following because you want people to have something to look at. You know, yes. So. Exactly. I was waiting for someone to finally ask that. I'm, I'm putting here the cart before the horse. I just created a brand new account and I'm trying to get followers. Why are people going to follow a blank empty account? So thank you, thank you for, for asking that. Yes. Um, the point is of any of these follow tactics, this is why I've got here an empty space, the point of any of these follow tactics, none of them are going to work if I have nothing to give to my audience. Why would I watch a TV channel that has nothing that I care about? 
Why would I read a magazine that has nothing that I care about? Why would someone follow my account if I have nothing that they would care about? So before trying to get all of these followers, before trying to get followers, you have some basic things. Set up, the, set up your account completely. So that's going to be, most of these accounts give you a space to write a biography or some sort of about info. Most of these networks give you a place to add your website link. Most of them give you a place to add like, you know, your hours of operation or something about your business. So set up your account, that basic aspect of it first. Then create content that shows what they should expect if they follow you. No one wants to follow an empty account with no with nothing. So yes, in the beginning you will be talking to no one or yourself, whichever you prefer. Yes, in the beginning you're talking to no one. No followers. You have no followers, but that's okay. In order for, for me to entice people to follow me, they need to know what they're, what they're signing up for, what they're going to follow. So yes, you're going to share some amount. And I, I do have recommendations here. Uh, start off with at least five different things shared in your account. One thing that's a text, post. One thing that's a photo, maybe one that's a photo plus a link. Maybe share a video, maybe share a question. The actual things to share, we, we cover it as the course goes on in different ways. But that's again like, why would I, why would I read that magazine if, if it doesn't have any articles that I'm interested in? Why would I watch that channel if it doesn't have any shows? I'm interested in. Why would someone follow you if you have nothing to show about what they'll get when they follow you? So five posts. Uh, going back to sharing at least once a week. I would recommend when you first start off and set all of this up, all of these five things, I would put these things like once per day. Goal. Share one thing every day for five days when you first create any account. This goes for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn. This goes for all the networks. And as, as I'm going to say over and over, whatever we learn on one network will apply to other networks, but with variations. In this, net, in this network, for example, we have something called communities. There are no communities on Twitter. There are no communities on Pinterest. Like over on, on Pinterest, they have pin boards. I don't have pin boards on Facebook. I don't have pin boards on Twitter. They all have their own nuances, but all of them have a way to share something, pictures, text, video. They all have a way to identify followers and reactions via notifications. They all have a way to reply to someone's content. They all have a way to share some kind of content, text, pictures, video, etc with variations. YouTube, you cannot share text. It has to be a video with sound. So they all vary, but we see these concepts over and over. So before we try to engage in this and more tactics that I'll talk about, we want to have our account set up minimally. We want to have some about information and we want to have some posts that show what we're about. Then when you've got these set up, then when you've got the minimal, engage in the following tactics. So let's take one more break, our second break. It's just about 11.40. Uh, we have a lot to think about. It's just about 11.40.
take a break until 11.50, uh, and then we'll go on to do this more concretely. So, we'll be back at 11.50, 11 sorry. <laughs>